Um, I, well, I was really into music my whole life. I played instruments so I can read music, even though I'm a bit rusty with that. Um, and then taking it up to the early raving years, early 90s, kind of got into that um, in San Francisco. And then in the mid 90s, uh, got into jungle and drum and bass. Wanted to know everything I could possibly know about it. And um, at the same time, I was finishing university and I started, uh, when I was done with that, I started working at a promotions company doing like music promotion in the States, college radio is like a really big format for testing out music. So I did that um, and started DJing the same year and doing parties. That was in 97 and uh, moved to London in 99 and <laughs> kind of just went from there really, just took the leap to try and just do music full time. And I used to do a label called Skunk Rock with some other guys. and. Uh, did that for a number of years um, and then eventually started uh, working at ESP, the agency, uh, about five, six years ago and do that full time, doing a new label now, DJing, producing, kind of it's all come, come together, yeah. Taking on a label at the time, at the moment is probably not the wisest thing to do because I'm really busy with everything but um, I one I always wanted to do a label on my own because I used to do one with other people uh, Two, I used to sort of help out with other labels as well that I wasn't directly involved with which was cool but again it wasn't my project and three I started making my own tracks and I just wanted a platform to like get my own stuff out there um, and four, I came across Lung, who kind of inspired me to sort of take it to the next level because I just really liked his music and I didn't want to just, um, you know, put his stuff out on a digital label. I wanted to take it all the way, really, because I think he deserves that. The mission of Kokeshi, I guess, is just what I like personally. Um, is definitely on the deeper, which is a word that's getting totally overused at the moment, sort of uh, dreamy side of whatever kind of music at the moment, it's gonna be dubstep. The first thing was drum and bass. There's gonna be a little bit of both coming up, but it might end up being techno or something else. I, I can't predict what I'm gonna decide on a year down the road, but um, it's just kind of the, the music that totally moves me and I just hope that people like it as well, really. Yeah, I guess it's just kind of the culmination of all my years of DJing and stuff and sort of just me selecting what I like really and not what I want to bring to the table. I, I hope people think it's unique. I mean, obviously there's so many labels at the moment that it's kind of, there are a dime a dozen and of, with the whole digital thing as well, there's even more in that spectrum alone. So it's kind of hard to stand out, but I'm hoping like just with the whole idea of Kokeshi and the logo and everything. I hope it does stand out a little bit to people, but we'll see, <laughs> yeah. Lung actually found me. I think he was my friend on Facebook and then he sent me a message uh, saying, oh, I think you'll like this. I think he saw me play as well in Cardiff where he's from before. Um, so he sent me a couple tracks, one being this Afterlife tune, and I um, was just really, really into it. But I took a, m a month or two to sort of think about it and just kind of think about what I was going to do with the stuff. And then I finally told him that I wanted to take the tracks. And there was lo loads of other tunes that he sent me as well that I really like. So I don't think this is going to be the first and only release from him. He's definitely got like a, you know, there's going to be other stuff from him. really cool I think I think the at least the the first release he's doing for me that that is just totally the sound that I like that just they just define what I like so I think it's perfect um, but I'm sure you know he is young and he's DJing more and it'll be interesting to see how he evolves as a as a producer now because he's just things are changing you know so I'm curious to see um, 
you know, what he brings with him in the future. The next release after that I've already got planned, that's going to be um, a track from me and this guy called Kiot. It's called uh, Purple Clouds. It's like a 140 dubstep glitchy kind of thing. And then the flip side is just Kiot on his own. It's called Missing Channel. And both of those are on the previous podcast. So It's a tricky one. I mean, I think um, if you talk to people that are a little bit younger than I might be, they might not be into vinyl like some people that are a little bit older might be, but I don't know. I mean, I think on the other hand, I, I think there's sort of a resurgence of vinyl because people are kind of seeing it more as a collectible kind of thing at the moment. So um, my plan is to sort of just do limited pressings. I'm not trying to sell like thousands and thousands of copies. I just want to you know, get the get the records out there, make it a bit of a special thing, and then if people don't like that, then they can still buy it online somewhere and just download the MP3. One, it's hard to get distribution, which is something I tried before, like after my old label, Skunk Rock, after that went under, um, and I struggled, and that's why I didn't do a label for years and years, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's very easy to set up a digital label, so I guess that does, in a way, sort of take the specialness out of it a little bit but then again if it was me and that was the only way I could get my stuff out there I would do that as well so I can't really blame people for doing that I've got like I said the thing with me and Kiat that's gonna come out I just finished a track with DRS from Manchester as well so I'm gonna I'm not sure where that will end up but probably just like on Kokeshi or something and um, yeah, just doing some other some other tunes and kind of just holding on to them. Really, we'll see what happens. But I'm really into like sort of just learning more with production, and we'll see where it goes. The tunes I can't live without would probably be well, it's an album, but the the whole album by Consequence, which is coming out on Exit Records, D Bridge's label. That's just an amazing album for DJing but just for listening as well just just really love it um, I quite like the scream remix of um, instrumentals no future as well which is a little bit controversial I think at the moment because people think it's quite hard and heavy it's a little bit rock but I like that as well um, yeah I'm trying to think what else Obviously, D Bridges stuff, really into it. I like these guys' triad as well. They're from Germany, and uh, they're doing some really cool stuff. Um, the new Critical album is quite good as well. There's some good stuff on there. It's just kind of, it's strange. It's kind of all over the place. You've got people like Chase and Status who are kind of doing a little bit of both. Um, you know, but their their sound is obviously going down one path, and then you've got the stuff like D Bridge and Instrumental are doing, which is a totally different direction. But because of their sort of alliance with Scream, and he's playing their tunes, it's kind of bringing dubstep and D and B together, which is really cool. Um, I don't know. I think it's exciting because I want it would be great to get more people back into drum and bass again. And um, if the two paths kind of merge a little bit, then great, because I think it will help both, both sides of it. But there's just a lot of variation at the moment musically, which I guess is a good thing, hopefully. It's not totally interested, but she, I did actually te try to teach her to mix and some kids from her school like a little competition thing and um, they all picked it up really quickly actually I can't believe it like within an, sort of an hour of them being there they were mixing so I um, was quite impressed but I think she might have a future on the microphone I could see her <laughs> getting involved somehow yes no her accent's cooler than mine that's why I use her on the podcast because it just sounds better <laughs>